So hi, I'm Michal Koutný. Uh, I'm from the kernel core team, and my responsibility are C groups. And today I'd like to tell you something about uh, C groups uh, version two, the new API. Uh, first, uh, I will describe the reasons uh, why uh, V1 are considered uh, worse. Uh, then I will uh, talk about uh, solving the issues with these uh, problems. Uh, then uh, I will perhaps uh, tell you something about some of the new features that are unique to V2. Then I will likely run out of the time, but uh, I hope I will be able to talk also about the transition to the V2, and that then will be the end. Yeah, so uh, you may remember that I had a talk about C groups uh, last year as well. Uh, that was concentrated on V1 problems, uh, but those are different. Uh, this, this is a different class of problems that I'm talking uh, about today. Uh, and uh, the idea is that uh, when we are switching from V1 to V2, uh, these problems uh, do not exist anymore. So uh, the first issue uh, with uh, V1 uh, uh, hierarchies is that uh, they are very generic and there can be multiple hierarchies. Uh, if uh, we check, uh, if we check uh, what exists on my system, uh, Sorry. Uh huh. Yeah, this is exactly what I expected. Yeah, my idea was that I will prepare some demos, and then something will be broken, and I will tell there's the problem with C groups V1, but uh, this is something different. Yeah, so if we check uh, uh, the, the C-group C group mounts, uh, uh, we see that there are multiple, uh, uh, multiple existing. Uh, for ex basically, for each controller, there is a separate hierarchy. And uh, if we look into them, uh, we will see uh, yeah, we will see that uh, for uh, different controllers, the hierarchy is built into different depths. So for example, the PID hierarchy uh, is uh, built, uh, it's the listing is limited. So it's built to this depth, uh, but for example, the CPU set hierarchy is only the root C group. So uh, there are multiple hierarchies and uh, the kernel has uh, no idea about the relation be between them. So uh, there can uh, this cannot be used uh, between the controllers. Uh, second issue uh, I want to talk about is uh, that uh, V1 uh, works uh, with threads, actually, not uh, with processes. And it can lead to some interesting uh, phenomena, uh, which I'd like to show again in a demo, uh, where I yeah, this again. Uh, yeah, I, I just prepare uh, two C groups uh, in the memory hierarchy. Uh, one small and one big, and uh, uh, 
uh, then I have a little program uh, that uh, uh, runs in multiple threads and uh, ac uh, according to the command line arguments I give to the program, uh, it uh, migrates the thread to the particular cube and then the thread allocates uh, that amount of megabyte memory. Uh, so if I, if I run only one thread in the big CPU, uh, it uh, uh, finishes, it's waiting, uh, so it's okay. Uh, if I do the same in the small CPU, so the small CPU has uh, the limit set for 128, uh, it's allocating 120, so it should be also okay. Yeah, okay, it's expected. Now, uh, I will uh, do the strange corner case where the two threads are running in different C groups. So uh, if I run it like this, it uh, finishes. Uh, we can see that uh, uh, the one thread allocated the, uh, its amount of memory in the big, big C group. Uh, and somewhere earlier, we will see that the uh, thread in the small C group finished earlier, but it also allocated uh, that amount of memory. So uh, this looks like that uh, the limit of the bigger C group is applied and uh, it should be somehow symmetrical if I just uh, swap the two threads. Uh, so let's try it. And here we can see that uh, the threads uh, were not able to allocate uh, their amount of memory and uh, the program was killed by OOM killer. So this is to illustrate that uh, the thread granularity for the controller that uh, works with resources that are bound to a process uh, uh, can create this weird situation. Uh, another example uh, is uh, the API itself that is not uh, very syn uh, synchronized or unified. If uh, we check uh, the CPU controller or the CPU accounting controller, these are in common hierarchy, uh, uh, we can see that CPU accounting controller provides uh, multiple statistical data. Uh, so uh, this should be the, the time uh, run by the processes in the CPU. So uh, in this file, we see some relatively small values. Um, those are, uh, these values are actually in uh, one hundredth of uh, seconds uh, the time. Uh, if we look at uh, another file from the same controller, so here, the times are in nanoseconds and the CPU controller uh, that has some knobs to regulating for regulating the uh, scheduling parameters uh, is using microseconds. So we can see uh, these two related controllers and three different units in similar API files. Uh, another uh, consequence of the general approach is that uh, uh, task can be member of any C group. And uh, if the hierarchy has more than one level, it means that there can be tasks in inner C groups, which again leads to interesting uh, scenarios. Uh, consider the CPU controller hierarchy, where uh, if we put a task into the inner, inner C group, uh, it will be competing with groups and the groups uh, are configuring their scheduling uh, scheduling uh, priority through weight, weight arguments and the task is uh, doing something very similar to nice uh, uh, nice value and uh, to it looks like that uh, those are two different uh, values it's like uh, adding uh, apples and oranges 
uh, another issue uh, uh, with this uh, API is uh, that uh, there is a possibility to register a user mode helper that uh, is spawned when C group becomes empty. Uh, this is uh, uh, used by the C, mm, for example, by system B uh, to remove the C group uh, when it's uh, not needed anymore. And uh, this can lead to interesting effects. Uh, sorry. For example, if we have multiple current jobs scheduled at the same time, and uh, they take approximately the, amount, uh, the same amount of time. So if, uh, and each cron job runs in a separate C group. So they start all at once, and also they end all at once. So there is a storm of these notifications, and uh, the notifications, uh, for some other reasons, can be lost. So uh, this, uh, and it's one of the reasons is also uh, that uh, we are starting the new, new process for each event. So, uh, yeah, it does not uh, scale well, and uh, also uh, this helper is uh, common for the all hierarchy. We cannot uh, define different helper for a subtree. Uh, yes, uh, also one of the idea of the C groups is uh, that uh, they are in this tree-like structure, and uh, we can uh, give a certain amount of resources to a subtree, and then the subtree can manage the, these resources on its own. Uh, I have another illustration for this. Yeah, uh, still working. Uh, yeah, so uh, I yeah, here I'm. I will use. Uh, system B run, uh, which is uh, which basically uh, creates a C group and uh, runs the program, uh, the command in that C group. Uh, so I'm setting uh, the memory limit on that C group, and uh, here is another uh, auxiliary program that allocates uh, more than this limit in the C group. Uh, if I run it as root, so it works as expected, uh, the program is killed. Uh, if I do the same as an unprivileged user, yeah, the same. So I started, uh, and the program happily runs. Uh, this is not, oh, yeah, this is, uh, uh, because uh, actually the limit is not applied to the user uh, to the to the C group uh, for which the user is responsible. Uh, this is because uh, the user would be then allowed uh, to change any attributes of the C group, and uh, in C group V1, uh, these attributes are not truly hier hierarchical. Uh, they can uh, they can affect uh, the global state uh, of the system, or they can force the parent. Uh, uh, they can force the parent to uh, uh, to not be able to change the value later, for example. So, uh, yeah. So the delegation also is not working uh, very nice. Yes. So, uh, how is this tackled? in C group V2. Uh, there is only uh, one hierarchy, uh, which is uh, called the default hierarchy, uh, sometimes the unified hierarchy. And uh, uh, there is no notion of attaching a controller to the hierarchy, but rather we enable the controllers in particular subtrees. So in uh, this diagram, uh, the circle uh, represents a C group, uh, the triangle represents the su subtree. And uh, there are two, uh, uh, two API files. Uh, uh, this, uh, uh, 
the CQ controllers is a read-only file that uh, uh, contains the C groups available uh, to that particular subtree. So on the root C group, those are basically the controllers that are available in the system. And then there is a subtree control file that allows us to e enable the controllers for its subtree. Uh, so it uh, should be uh, this picture should be illustrating that uh, uh, the different uh, subtrees uh, can uh, have the hierarchy built into the different depth. Uh, and uh, there are further constraints in the unified hierarchy that uh, uh, tasks cannot be in the inner node. Uh, and although uh, there is a limited uh, thread granularity that uh, uh, controllers are divided into two groups. Uh, there are uh, threaded controllers and uh, non-threaded controllers. And uh, uh, if uh, uh, the subtree, uh, if a subtree uh, has enabled only threaded controllers, uh, then uh, it can be marked as a threaded subtree, and uh, threads can be migrated in this uh, subtree as in CU v1. Uh, but uh, for example, the memory control is not threaded, so in that case, uh, all the subtree, despite it's threaded, is only handled on the top level, as uh, all the threads represent uh, one, uh, one domain, resource domain, they call it. Mm, are there any questions to this? Okay, so no, later. Uh, the uh, the rectification of the API files uh, created uh, some abstractions that uh, we have basically uh, four ways how to control the resources. Uh, yeah, I hope that the names are quite descriptive. There are some examples of uh, uh, of particular uh, attributes of uh, controllers. Uh, one important uh, note uh, about these attributes is that uh, uh, they allow overcommit, and uh, that uh, there is difference between effective value of the attribute and uh, the configured value of the attribute. The th this is a completely uh, a completely valid configuration, where we can see that. Uh, uh the sum of uh, group one and uh, group two of memory is greater uh, than their parent memory. And uh, uh, it means that uh, whichever of the two groups uh, hits the limit uh, will, yeah, it will, will be, for example, uh, killed by a uh, killer or, uh, uh, or will be reclaimed. Uh, but uh, what I mean is that it will, it, uh, May l hit the limit of the parent uh, C group, which is uh, which is actually the second example I have in this uh, configuration, where the group three is unlimited, but it but its parent um, has a, a, a definite limit, so the group three is effectively limited by its parent. So uh, this allows composition of the configurations, so that uh, I have this group three, and I want it to be always on unlimited. Uh, but uh, if uh, uh, it, for example, it is under a in a container, and uh, I am creating my C groups for containers, so if I put that container into the parent two C group, so uh, it will be limited by parent two value. If I run that container uh, in different uh, C group, uh, it will be unlimited, uh, and I don't have to change the configuration of the. Uh, container uh, limit. Uh, yes, uh, as uh, I have shown in that picture uh, of the unified hierarchy, uh, the subtree control file uh, enables the controllers uh, in its subtree. So uh, we can Uh, we can uh, be we can be sure that uh, 
uh, yeah, mm, yeah, this is uh, multiple reasons why the delegation is uh, uh, is uh, possible properly with CDU P2. First, uh, it's uh, this hierarchical beha behavior of uh, the control attribute, and uh, uh, the second is uh, that uh, uh, we can delegate just the controllers that we want uh, to the subtree. Uh, yes, and uh, release notifications are also uh, optimized or changed. Uh, there is a special file that uh, lists lists various values uh, for the C group, and uh, such file uh, can be, uh, for example, uh, checked by iNotify, and uh, uh, such notifications are much cheaper than starting a whole new process. Yes, uh, now we are getting uh, to that part where I said that I will be running out of time. So uh, here is uh, just some short overview of the features that are uh, that are possible only in uh, V2, or uh, almost all of them. Uh, uh, yeah, we can uh, we can talk about it uh, in the questions session uh, because I want to get uh, uh, to that part. Uh, why not to use uh, CDU P2? Uh, in theory, the kernel APIs are uh, somehow backwards compatible in a way that uh, the particular control can be uh, either enabled in the unified hierarchy or it can be attached uh, to a V1 hierarchy. So there is no uh, no hard switch between the two variants. Uh, but uh, the program starts uh, with uh, how the main uh, system hierarchy is being built. It's built by systemd, and it supports three modes of building the hierarchy. Uh, one is the legacy mode, where it's just the V1 hierarchies for everything, hybrid mode, where uh, the separate hierarchies are used for the uh, controllers, and uh, V2 uh, unified hierarchy is used only for process tracking by systemd. And the unified mode, where the unified hierarchy is used for everything, so that control uh, controllers are enabled in this hierarchy. Uh, the current default is the hybrid, uh, and it can be changed uh, uh, by the kernel command line option. Uh, yes, and there is no such uh, option like hybrid hybrid, where some controllers would run uh, or would be enabled uh, in the V2 uh, unified hierarchy, and the rest would be uh, attached to the V1 hierarchies. Uh, there is uh, one positive po side to this, uh, that not all uh, controllers are actually used by systemd. So, for example, CPU set controller at the moment. Uh, so they can be uh, they can be used uh, in the old way all the time. But yeah, without the V2 uh, advantages. Uh, yeah, the problem obvious as I have described uh, on the diagram, is that the API is different. So uh, the consumers of it, or the direct consumers, had to be adjusted. Uh, uh, in my opinion, one of the, uh, one of the mo most important consumers is systemd, and uh, that al already uh, supports V2 uh, APIs. There are other uh, other components uh, that uh, use uh, C group, as far as I know. Uh, for example, libvirt or various container runtimes, and uh, there are uh, certainly other users unknown to me. Uh, what I want to say is that uh, uh, systemd uh, provides another abstraction above uh, the C group API, so it's rather uh, uh, transparent or uh, not transparent. Uh, it does not matter uh, for the users of the systemd APIs uh, if it runs on V1 or V2. So in my opinion, it's somehow a successor of the libcg. Uh, the other components that I mentioned here 
are, in my opinion, uh, working on adoption of V2, but uh, as far as I know, they are not ready yet. Uh, yeah, this table, uh, I think uh, if uh, you should uh, remember anything from this talk, so then it's that picture of the sub-t control files and uh, this table. Uh, <laughs> uh, which shows the, uh, s the implementation of the various controllers because the v uh, v2 behavior of uh, the controllers was not ready uh, since the beginning. Uh, it was uh, only gradually implemented. Uh, you can see that the newest, uh, uh, newest addition in this table is uh, the CPU set controller, uh, uh, no, sorry, freezer, freezer controller uh, in uh, V5.2 kernel. So uh, if we want to use some of these features in slash kernels, uh, we cannot use all of them because they are not ready in that kernels. Uh, but I think that uh, in Tumbleweed, it might be a good idea or a suggestion uh, to switch to the unified hierarchy uh, to cover the behavior of the new uh, controllers. Yeah, so a short summary. Uh, at the beginning, uh, I uh, demonstrated some of the issues with the uh, V1 APIs. Uh, then uh, I presented uh, how it's solved in uh, V2, and uh, uh, yeah, so I tried to uh, mention briefly the new features, and at the end, uh, the programs with the switch for the adoption of the V2 API. Uh, yeah, these are the resources for these slides. Uh, actually, yeah, uh, this uh, slide and this talk is not very exhaustive. I recommend reading the proceedings uh, article, uh, which is much better than this talk. Uh, and uh, now it's time for your questions, maybe. Two minutes. You said that we should switch the default in Tumbleweed. Is it something we should do in kernel or in systemd? Uh, it's uh, in systemd. Actually, I have already talked with systemd maintainers, and uh, yeah, they are afraid of these uh, users like libvirt or uh, containers that they might be broken. I want it for cubic, so uh, yeah. You want it? Yes. <laughs> I'm going to have to move from run C to C run because C run supports V2 and run C doesn't, but it's worth it. Yeah, so uh, it's actually a good message. Cool. Thank you. Okay. <laughs>